What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this time we're taking a look at some tips for your Lenovo Legion Go. I do these videos every now and then for all the different devices and I wanted to put one out. I think a lot of people probably got one of these on sale for Black Friday, probably got some for the holidays and it's a good time to do it again. So just five kind of tips to kind of get you started. Nothing super crazy here as far as going too deep into the device or anything like that. Pretty standard stuff, but things I've been asked about a good bit. So starting off is a pretty simple one, and that's going to be updates and kind of like where to get them all. So typical Windows, you do have to go to the Windows Store and get a lot of updates for your different apps here. And if you just got a Legion Go, it's likely a couple of dozen or more updates that will need done in there. So that's one of the places that you definitely want to be checking and keeping up to date. Now, the other one, some people don't necessarily like to keep Windows update going, but unless I have it paused like I do here for a side loaded driver that I don't want overwritten, I pretty much do try to keep Windows up to date and ready to go that way on the device. And I've never really had any problem with that. So always check there as well. Now, the other place is going to be Legion Space. So using the Legion Space button, we're going to open that up. We're going to go over here to settings. Go where it says disk and drives and then check for updates. This is going to be where you get all the other drivers and updates for your device from Lenovo, from your GPU driver, the official one, which you'll see up here. I have the side loaded one on, so that's why that's showing up. But your chipset drivers, BIOS, audio, whatever the case, this is where you're going to get all those updates as well. So those are all the major places you need to go and make sure your device is updated, especially if you've just factory reset or just got one for the holiday or just got one in your hands. The other thing is our quick access menu. If we go down here to the question mark and go to online support, we can get into the website for the Legion Go and get some support that way. Sometimes they'll release drivers there first and you might want to download them that way or you might be having trouble with space. So if you go to that website and go to PC and we'll go in here to uh, detect product, that should go ahead and detect our Legion Go. If you don't have Service Bridge installed yet, it may want you to do that, but that's very quick and easy to do. So once that's detected, we've got our Legion Go showing up here. Go ahead and close this, and we can come down here to Drivers and Software. I'm going to go to Manual Update, and on this page, you can actually see all the drivers available for download and install. So if you're having trouble, this might be a way to go and get those and install them manually as well. So all the different places you can go for your updates. All right, so next we've got tip number two, which is going to be about VRAM allocation for the device. Now, I typically am using four gigabytes or six gigabytes when I'm gaming, kind of depending on the game. Right now, I have them set at four gigabytes on the device. I was doing some Cyberpunk and other games that didn't really require any more than that and actually want more system RAM, which is the other thing. You never want to over allocate your VRAM because you are taking away from that 16 gigabytes of overall memory and windows and games and everything often do want a lot of system RAM available as well. So it's kind of a balance between the two and what you're playing as to if you're going to have stutters or performance issues, setting this properly and having decent performance for me, four gigabytes or six gigabytes is almost always the go-to, but I know a lot of you guys do like auto, but we're going to shut down the device. Then we're going to hold up on the volume button and press power. Keep holding up on that volume button. And this is going to get us into our BIOS menu. So we can change the VRAM settings. You see a different options, normal setup, BIOS setup, boot menu, and system recovery. So we're going to use BIOS setup here and we can change VRAM settings in there. They haven't added this to space yet like Asus has an armory crate, unfortunately. So you have to go through this process each time you do want to change it. But in BIOS and more settings and configuration, you'll see UMA frame buffer size. This is going to be your VRAM allocation. We have 3G, 4G, 6, 8, and auto. I know a lot of people do like auto, but it doesn't always work for all the games. However, you can set that and use it quite often. Again, I use 4 or 6 most of the time, depending on the game. We'll switch it to 6 here just because... I had it at four and I want to show you the change. So we'll exit, exit saving changes, and yes, and we'll get restarted. Now we can go in and check, and we'll have a different allocation here for our system memory. We got a little bit less on our overall system RAM available, but if we go to our GPU, we'll see that we now have these six gigabytes allocated. I actually like the five option over on ASUS with the ROG Ally, kind of a decent balance a lot of times, but uh, they haven't added that here. So four or six, you can go auto as well. Most of the time, you're not going to need to do much of anything else there though. And it really is game dependent as to whether or not it affects performance. All right, so tip number three is gonna be removing any apps or programs you don't need. 
Uh, one way to do this is go to settings, go to apps and go to installed apps and scroll through the list here and find anything that you don't use or don't want on the device and go ahead and uninstall it. There's usually a lot of stuff here that you won't see on mine. I've already taken off even all the Microsoft Office stuff. I don't use that on these. I use these strictly as gaming handhelds. So I typically will go through and remove pretty much anything I think I'm not going to need to either test the device or make content or whatever the case may be. So make sure you go through and look to remove anything just to either free up space or resources or that type of thing on the devices. Also, you can go into search and go to your control panel and go to uninstall program, which is the more old fashioned way to do it. But sometimes there'll be programs that will show up here that don't necessarily show up in the app setting that we were looking at. So it's another place to go look and make sure there's nothing installed that you don't run, want running on the device and it'll kind of help clean it up a little bit. There are more less bloated versions of Windows out there, but I really just want to cover the official stuff here for this. The other thing you can go is start and all for your apps here and scroll through your start menu and remove apps directly from here as well. All of those places are good to go check and go through every now and then and make sure things haven't been installed that you don't want installed or Windows hasn't put something there and just get rid of it to both save space and make sure it's not booting up or running anything when you start up the device. So definitely a good thing to be able to do and uh, go through and clean up and get things running well. The other part of this would be going into task manager and making sure there aren't any programs starting up that you don't want to. You go over here to this little tab on the left and you'll see different programs here in the startup options. And one thing I left alone was suppression from AMD here for noise suppression. I'm going to disable that to show you guys enable and disable. But yeah, make sure anything you don't want booting up isn't booting up and that'll help keep things a bit cleaner as well. Now, the other thing is going to be TDP options and your thermal limits and your modes here on the device and kind of where those land and what you might want to do with those. So we've got the quiet mode you can go through. We've got balance. We have performance and then we have our custom and we'll take a little bit closer look at those here in a minute as well. But on the performance mode, that's typically the 20 watt mode when it's not boosting, which again, we'll take a closer look at that. It'll be on the smart fan and you can always change that over to like a full fan if you really need to cool things down or whatever the case may be. You can also toggle through these by holding the space button down and hitting Y and that'll toggle you through those performance options as well. Now, again, over on performance, like I said, if you needed to, you could just tap full fan. It's obviously going to become pretty audible, but it'll cool down the device if all of a sudden, you know, you've been gaming a lot or something's going on with your thermals. You want to cool it down. Otherwise, on those three presets, you've got smart or full speed. On custom now, you can do a custom fan curve or full speed. I have it kind of aggressive here because I was testing a lot of 30 watt handheld stuff recently, which you are able to go all the way up to 30 watts in handheld mode and all the way down to that seven right there or five and adjust it how you want. You got all three sliders for your two boosting sliders and your main low TDP slider at the top there. And we'll go into a game and check that out as well here in just a minute. But over in Legion Space and in Settings, you can get a bigger area to look at this and adjust everything. It might be a little bit easier. Set this up and adjust your sliders here. It's also a good way to come in here and adjust your custom fan curve and um, get that the way you want as well. You can just toggle across these with your D-pad if you want, select them, move them up and down, and adjust your own fan curves to work out how you need to as well. You might want it to run more quiet, you might be lower TDP, or you might need to really cool things down and ramp it up. It really depends on what you're setting up, but you got different custom slots you can set up for this and it's easy to swap back and forth. So let's take a look at that in the game a little bit real quick just so you can kind of see it in action. If we open up the quick access menu here, we're just sitting in Cyberpunk, and I'll click Balance to come down here. Now, this is the 15-watt TDP mode, so when it's not boosting, uh, it'll be sitting at 15 watts on the Balance mode. On Quiet, that's its 9 or 10-watt mode, so when it's not boosting, it'll be usually hovering around 10, and the Performance mode, or go back to Balance mode, will boost back up here. You'll see it boost for just a second, and then it'll come back down to its 15 pretty quickly. And then we're going to switch over to performance and you'll see it boost again and then it will settle back down to its 20 watts. So 10, 15 and 20 uh, for those performance modes when they're not boosting. Now, I usually use the 20 watt in most games. It works out pretty well unless I'm doing something custom there. So on custom, I've got 25 here goes to my custom fan curve and you'll see that kick in here as well. And you can see the thermals and the game performance and everything changing in my overlay there as we change this TDP around. We can go ahead and tap on this and bring this all the way up to 30 for everything. So no boosting, but just a 30 watt max there. 
and that works out well too. Again, you'll see temperatures rise. This will usually get me more to 80, 81, and that's why I have that aggressive fan curve down there for the testing I was doing. But coming back down to 25, it'll usually do pretty decent around 74, 75C and get pretty decent performance there with that. But yeah, that's pretty much how you change things with your TDP. And depending on the game you're playing will depend on how much power you need, your thermals and all that kind of stuff and your performance. But that's how you go through kind of change things and tweak it how you want it there on the Legion Go. Now tip number five is something I've been asked about a lot and it's setting up the hotkeys or the buttons on the back of the device to shortcut the things like the AMD and adrenaline shortcuts. So I'll show you how to do that here. I can toggle the overlay, a, uh, AMD fluid motion frames with the side loaded driver, uh, the sidebar, anything I want there or any other app. But what we're going to do is I'm going to open up Adrenaline and use this as the example because this is one you guys have asked me about the most. So if I go into Adrenaline, I hit the gear icon up at the top right here, and then we're going to go into Preferences first. And if you want to be able to use the overlay, which often with the side load driver doesn't work properly in game or especially with fluid motion frames, but you'll have that toggled on. Now go over to Hotkeys and you'll see Use Hotkeys. We have that enabled. And then on this page, you have a full list of all of the hotkeys that are available from AMD Adrenaline that you can then program into Legion space and make easy to access like Alt Z for your sidebar. You have the different options for anti lag and for your performance overlay here, like control shift uh, O. And then all the way at the bottom, we have fluid motion frames, which is the Alt Shift G, which we can program in and turn that on and off easily with just the buttons on the controller while we're in a game. So going over to Legion Space and into Controllers here, you're going to see Button Mapping. We're going to click on that and we get options for either our gamepad or our FPS mode to go in and fully customize all the button mapping that we want to. Now I'm not going to do much with FPS mode here and I haven't used it a ton. I'm going to concentrate on gamepad mode, but the principle is all the same when it comes to setting up your hotkeys. So going over here to game mad, game pad mode, again, you could switch and add templates here if you want to. I just have the typical game pad one on here because you could change all the buttons on here, even all the face buttons if you wanted to, to anything you wanted. So we'll click view and edit layout. Now, I'm not going to change anything with the face buttons for my game pad mode here, but we are going to concentrate on those rear buttons for those shortcuts for AMD Adrenaline. So we're going to click rear view right here, turns around and it shows us all the back buttons on the Legion Go that we can program. And I have some of them already done here as I've been using Adrenaline and testing different things, toggling them on and off. But I'm just going to touch the screen. You could use your touchpad as well or a mouse, but I'm just going to touch the screen on one of the buttons that we want to program and we'll take a look at how it's going to work here. So we'll touch on this one right here. It brings up an option for all the options, control, mouse, keyboard, but key combination is what we want for adrenaline so that we can put in multiple key inputs uh, like for bring up the overlay or fluid motion frames. Or I'll just make one up here, Alt Shift O that I say I want to put in there. I just click that and then I would push a Y to confirm it and you'll see now it's programmed in there. Really easy to set up. Again, I'm using adrenaline because that's the one I use it for the most and what people have asked me about, but you could do this for anything that you want in shortcuts to. We'll touch another one here and bring this up again. Anything for controller, mouse, keyboard, number pad, you can program in anything here. We'll go back to key combination and I'm going to go ahead and let's say you forget. I'm just going to close space, come back over here and we want to do the sidebar. Let's say we want to do the sidebar Alt Z. So I'll go back. I'm going to program in my key combination, Alt Z. Press Y to confirm. Now you'll see that programmed in here on my other shortcut button. So that works really well. It's really simple, and they've actually done a good job with this in Legion Space. It's one of the good things Lenovo has done with their updates is this mapping works out really well, and I think it's really easy to understand. So you're able to go in, and now I can toggle that overlay. I can bring up the sidebar with just the buttons on the back. I can toggle fluid motion frames in a game, whatever I want to. And again, I'm using adrenaline and these as the examples, but easy to program any kind of shortcuts in here that you want. Again, inside of a game, easy to activate fluid motion frames since I'm using that side loaded driver here and they'll kick in and work just fine. I can turn them on and off. It's really convenient to be able to just use the buttons on the back of the device to toggle all these different things on and off for AMD adrenaline. So that's just kind of the way I've been using it. And a lot of you have asked me about that. So I wanted to show it here in the tips. Now, the final thing, I only had five tips planned, but I want to throw a sixth one in here, just a bonus one for anyone who's tech savvy. And I've talked about that side loaded driver a good bit in here, not the official one from Lenovo. I have three guide videos here now 
on the channel for installing those side loaded drivers from AMD onto Legion Go to use fluid motion frames and get some performance out of some of the other newer games. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll put links in the description to a couple of those guides and you can check it out. Um, if that's something that you've heard about or you want to take a look at, it's just another thing that can help you on the device. If you have trouble running certain games or you really just want to play with AMD's fluid motion frames too, or anything like that. However, it can be quirky, and for some people, it will break space, Legion space. It will break other things on the device. I've seen all kinds of things like that happen, and sometimes you wind up having to reset everything and start over. But for the tech savvy that want to have fun and do that, I'll put the links in the description. We kind of like to tinker around here, so I do do it quite often, but I will be reverting back to the OEM official Lenovo drivers here pretty soon because that newer update, even though it's still an older driver, is pretty stable and running really well, and I want to do some more testing on the device. So by no means do you need to do that. But it's just another tip if it's something you want to be able to do. A six bonus tip. I'll throw those links in the description for how to do that on the Legion Go. But anyways, guys, that's your five tips here for your Lenovo Legion Go. Hopefully some information that maybe helped you out a little bit, especially if you're new to the device or setting up a Windows device in general. It might have helped you out there. All right, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.